Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So in this video, one of my subscribers was trying to follow along in one of the tutorials I made for doing um, form validation, basically. And he was running to an issue where when he clicked on the submit button, it was throwing this error and he didn't know how to figure it out. He didn't know how to fix it. So in this video, I'm kind of gonna show you how to properly use your dev tools if you're a beginner to be able to resolve some of these issues by yourself. Just to kind of walk, him and whoever else through if they run into an issue when they're kind of trying to learn how to code in JavaScript. When you see an error in your console, um, the first thing you want to do is just take a take a step back and actually read it. Okay, so it says cannot read property class list of null. So it's kind of cryptic to understand what this means, but it's basically meaning that you're trying to access a property called class list from an object that is null. Okay, so what that says to me is that somewhere in this code. We'll talk about line numbers in a second, but somewhere in this code, it's trying to access something called class list, which happens to only happen in three places. So down here and then up here. And it crashes because ELM elm is null. This is null for whatever reason, and it tries to access a property off of null and it crashes. Check this tip out, right? If you look at my cursor down here, it's printing out the line number in the file. So if I go to this file and go to line 32, that tells you exactly where it's crashing. So in your Chrome debugger, make sure you have this thing open. When you first see the error, typically you can click on the link here and that'll go to your sources tab in Chrome. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this. This again will show you right where the error is happening and it'll also underline the issue. So it's basically crashing on this line here and it's kind of, you need to kind of use that information to debug it. So what you can typically do with your debugger is you can put a line break, okay? What this does is that the next time an exception is thrown, uh, this debugger will give you the option to kind of step through and inspect what's going on in the page. So let me go ahead and do that for you. So once you've set the debugger, you can basically try to resubmit it. And you'll notice here, down here, the debugger stopped on the actual exception and you can hover over some of these things. Like if I can hover over Elm, I can hover over uh, any of these things and see what happens. So notice here, if you hover over Elm, it actually is defined. So I think originally it's, at the start of this video, I said Elm was probably undefined, but really after doing some debugging, you'll notice that next element sibling is debugged. So I think at the start of this video, I was saying that like Elm is probably the issue and Elm is null, but actually I was wrong. The issue is, is that Elm dot next element sibling is null. And if you actually hover over this, you can see that the value is null here and that when it tries to access class list of null, it crashes. So this is the issue here, right? This stuff right here. And secondly, if you're using the Chrome debugger, you can actually expand down here and have a console show up. This isn't showing up for you. You could basically, I think you go to here, click on the three dots, and then there should be a way to show the console drawer. But down here in your console, you can actually do some cool stuff. You can type Elm and that'll print out the element and you can hover over it and see where it is on your DOM. Secondly, you could type out elm.next element sibling, press enter, and you'll see that that prints out null, okay? So this is how you can use the debugger to help get more information um, if you're completely lost. And if you're a beginner, I definitely recommend you spend some time learning about your debugger. You could also, in your code, this is a cool trick that you can do as well, is you can actually put debugger here. And if I were to get rid of that line break that I manually added, so you'll notice here now that when I hit the error, it's going to stop right where that debugger keyword is in my code. And then I can kind of step through and see what things are equal to in my Chrome debugger over here. Let me make sure I kind of minimize this. Uh, dude, this is so hard to grab. All right, so I can you know, type out Elm and see what it is. Try to figure out what's going on. But the issue in this scenario, right, after doing some debugging, you, we notice that Elm.next element sibling is null. But in this tutorial that I did on my YouTube channel, this was actually defined. So that makes me think, okay, maybe I should go into my HTML and try to understand where it's trying to grab the next sibling. Um, actually, before you do that, I think it's good to even understand like what does next element sibling do? So in this case, you should probably start Googling JavaScript next element sibling and read about it. Like what does this actually do? Well, it grabs the next sibling in your DOM tree. And if there is no sibling, it returns null. So that should give you some information. You can go back to this. And if you kind of map back to the JavaScript and try to figure out what's going on, we're trying to grab the next sibling next to the input. So in this 
case, it's probably trying to grab this input's next sibling. Well, in his code, he decided to wrap all his inputs in another div with a column of 75, which means that there is no next sibling. Okay, so now all the JavaScript is breaking because he decided to change how the DOM was structured. Now you could easily fix this by probably doing like element sibling. That might fix it because um, I think that's what he wants to do. He put the error kind of outside of the nested column. What he could also do instead is just put this inside maybe. It really depends. I don't know how his code set up. This might look really bad with styling. But there's different ways that he can kind of modify my JavaScript or his JavaScript, I should say, to get this working. I think you could also like, it might be safer to put IDs on these. So like if your email input is trying to turn on the email error div, maybe you need to add like an a ID here and call it like email error. And then in your JavaScript, what you could do is query for email error and then say show or something like that or remove, add the class hidden, etc. So the point I'm trying to drive home is basically you need to get good at debugging using some of the debugging tools that are provided to you, right? Not a lot of people talk about these, but learning how to use your Chrome debugger or how to step through code is really important when you're a beginner because you're gonna get caught up in errors like this where it would be really useful instead of console logging stuff, you could just add a debugger and see what values are, hover over elements and see them highlighted in your DOM, um, hover over properties of elements, and see what their values are as well. So if you're new to JavaScript and web development, watch a couple of YouTube channels that kind of explain how to use the Chrome debugger and try to also use that debugger keyword instead of doing console logs because it kind of gives you more insight into your issues. All right, I think that's all I really have to say about this. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow. Secondly, leave me a comment below if you have a special way that you like debugging your JavaScript or your node code. Honestly, everyone I meet just does a bunch of console logs because typically when you're doing like Webpack or Parcel and dealing with source maps, it really messes up your code. Babel screws up your code. So when you're trying to actually map where it's crashing in your Chrome console versus where it's actually defining your code, it kind of becomes a nightmare. Um, that's why I think a lot of people do console logs. We're kind of just so used to ecosystem sucking. And then thirdly, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to have a lot of other videos like this in the future where I'm going to show you vanilla JS, maybe some tips and tricks, and then also talk about other frameworks in the front end and web development. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.